data. And that is what I want to focus on now. Alberta's path forward will be a stepped approach to easing restrictions based on hospitalization benchmarks. Total hospitalizations, both for uh, ICU and general acute care, is the key metric that will guide how and when we ease public health measures. We chose hospitalizations because it's a clear indicator of healthcare capacity. It's also a lagging indicator, indicator, which means it gives us a better idea of how relaxations affect the healthcare system. Daily case numbers and case growth are leading metrics and better reflect recent transmission trends. Daily case numbers and growth will be used to guide decisions around the need to pause further relaxations or potentially to increase restrictions if the virus once again poses a growing threat. And let me pause here to make an absolutely clear point. If cases of COVID-19 surge again, if we start moving once again towards exponential growth, like we saw in uh, November, December, uh, and if somehow one of these new uh, viral variants takes hold in our community and begins to spread at rates seen in uh, some other parts of the world, we will have to impose stronger restrictions again. Hospitalizations will be used to guide decisions around easing restrictions. When a hospitalization benchmark is reached, decisions will be uh, considered for moving to the next step of relaxing restrictions. To be clear, the hospitalized, uh, hospitalization benchmarks uh, will uh, be the primary factor, uh, but we'll obviously have to look at whether uh, we're back into a growth of the virus. Once we move, uh, once we move uh, into the, that step, we will reevaluate hospitalizations three weeks later. I'll have more detail on the three week period later on. If by that time, hospitalizations have fallen even further to the next benchmark, we'll consider moving into that next step. So I'm now going to walk you through the plan that we have developed uh, and uh, based on the advice of, of our public health experts, one that sets out specific benchmarks to drive each stage. Uh, as we walk through the steps in our path uh, forward, uh, it is important to understand that there will be a progression of easing that occurs at each step. Some degree of restrictions will still apply to all activities within each step. As of today, we are in what we are calling early steps. Schools have returned to in-person class. Outdoor social gatherings of up to 10 people are allowed. Personal and wellness services are open for appointment only and uh, funeral service attendance is now capped uh, at 20 people up from 10. And let me pause there to just emphasize the importance of our decision uh, made in December uh, to reopen the schools sometime, uh, at the beginning of, or the middle of January because that's 720,000 people who are learning together and working together. Um, that's hundreds of thousands of families who have the support of those schools, the mental health support that kids get at those schools, a critically important part of our step forward uh, towards reopening. Step one will include some easing of restrictions related to uh, school, related to the functioning of schools, including indoor and outdoor children's sports and performance, and easing of some restrictions related, related to um, indoor fitness for adults will also allow for some dine-in options for restaurants, cafes, and pubs. Now, these activities will still be bound by clear limitations. For example, there will be physical distancing requirements, activity restrictions, group size limitations, and masking amongst other mandatory measures. Uh, and let me pause there to say that uh, with respect to step one, we have now, uh, in the last two or three days, achieved a, the threshold of moving below 600 hospitalizations. Uh, and the last step towards relaxation of public health measures was uh, on January the 18th. And so uh, we are comfortable to proceed with this step one on Monday, February the 4th. Now, some people might say, why aren't you doing this immediately? I reiterate that we must do this in a careful 
gradual stepped approach. Why? So we can assess the impact, the full impact of each stage of relaxations. What business people tell us is the last thing they want is a roller coaster. Uh, they don't want the so-called yo-yo effect of opening and closings. That's why we have to be careful and deliberate and allow for the full uh, 21 days to elapse between measures. Uh, so we have, we'll be taking the step one measures on Monday, February the 8th. Step two would proceed only after we see the weekly average for hospitalizations drop below 450, easing some restrictions for retail, community halls, banquet halls, hotels and conference centers, and there will be some further easing of restrictions